Maybe it's your attitude that stinks. Maybe you should try a different approach. There's not a conspiracy to kill ya. Of course there's not a um, grandiose state, local and government oppressive force to desecrate your soul and rob you of prosperity. You can't die in a hospital and literally have it called a fatal um, attempt and a lethal injury and nothing happened. Of course someone would stick up for you if that happened. You know, a family member, a friend. Everyone would be outraged. The Health Complaints Commissioner, they would definitely be on your side. There's no way that the Mental Health Complaints Commissioner, if you're a mental health client of our hospital, um, would deny um, that that even happened. Of course the Mental Health Complaints Commissioner would not um, be outnumber you and be caught out, be being biased um, <laughs> due to, uh, due to um, them abandoning you and favouring the hospital to protect those in positions of money, power and privilege because you're utterly and absolutely framed. Now, considering even if that were to occur, like no one actually cared that you died, then um, of course, um, if you went to the um, Ombudsman, um, of course Ben Calder from the Victorian Ombudsman would see that um, um, using an illegal contraband, such as a vape pen, um, uh, is contravening the human rights law and um, is clearly an issue that needs to be um, at the very least apologised for and he'd never condone it, there's nothing to see. The government cares for you. Oh, you're absolutely psychotic. I mean, they took you into hospital because you had delusions of persecution and they were absolutely all in your head. A conspiracy to murder isn't a correct way to um, describe the profound, systemic, local, state and federal government oppression that you've had to face. It's obviously you and your mental health issues that are at play here. The Attorney General, she's awesome. Michaelia Cash, what a legend. Uh, I've got a whole lot of issues under the um, Michaelia case, like the Australian Human Rights Centre, free kicking a million dollar case to the opposition. But the government had nothing to do with that because um, I, I wouldn't have known that um, it, it, it was f all foiled because I went to the company directly and got an atonement from them. So obviously um, there's no crime committed there. And Comcare, Comcare are um, an entirely reputable and beautiful set of people and they um, really help people who have valid work cover compensation claims. And in addition to that, um, Paul Fowler, he's not corrupt. Paul Fowler from um, WorkSafe, uh, from Comcare, he wasn't the old head at WorkSafe. Therefore, if I had an issue with a Comcare appeal, I could easily go to WorkSafe and have them help me. And they wouldn't reject me. And they wouldn't say just go to Comcare where I'd still be rejected by Paul Fowler. Um, that would never happen. I love how HCF, which is so pleasant and easy to deal with, when I um, left my place of work because I'd been framed in two vocat cases and triggered by um, my um, client's um, sexual abuse and incest and child rapes um, as my same thing of the sexual abuse case was going on for me with vocat. And um, because um, my uh, magistrate from Geelong Magistrates Court, well, my, the, the lawyer, my lawyer, took over three, over three and a half years and six different lawyers to get it in front of the magistrate. And all that time, they didn't watch me suffer and become really um, sad and um, pessimistic and even kind of suicidal about it. That would never happen. And it would never happen that it finally get to the magistrate and your lawyer rings you up and says, Oh, it fell over in court. That's it. Uh, we'll wait to hear your instructions. And I say, hang on, you can't just say that. Like, where's the evidence? And they would never say, oh, that's personal information. They would never say about a sexual abuse case. Um, out of, uh, just after um, your lawyer, um, like, left it go so long watching you nearly kill yourself. And then they illegally gave you an outcome. And you wouldn't be able to, you, you'd be easily able to go to a government agency and, um, and report that. There's no way that um, after all that happened, that uh, they'd wait 
literally and intelligently until it was out of time, so you couldn't appeal, and then you wouldn't beg um, for it, uh, it, an element of existence that it even occurred. Um, you wouldn't have to do that because it would be just uh, so done by the book. And you, the magistrate would never say, you were doomed to fail from the start because um, that kind of colourful language to a sexual abuse victim is um, really abhorrent. That would never happen, and it has nothing to do with your um, prior life as a framed person. Shift were great. They stepped in straight away, and they acknowledged within five days my claim, and it hasn't been a whole year um, that they've banned me from calling. It hasn't been a whole year that they haven't paid me. It hasn't been a whole year that um, I've found out that I'm under investigation. And it hasn't been a whole year since I found out they were doctoring fraudulent um, um, PDFs, of which I caught them. And there's no way they could deny um, that they would acknowledge me um, if I sent that evidence to Sheena Jack, the CEO. I got my money from HCF and it wasn't acting in um, cohesion with AFCA, who had overdue determinations for um, over two and a half years. That sounds illogical. They've got to work under AFSA's regulations, which say be fair and equitable. And um, they also say that um, it has to be done in a certain amount of time. So clearly, um, when I emailed AFCA and HCF when I was out of work, um, uh, off, off on leave, that, um, that they would act together to try and um, bring some um, financial um, um, ease to my situation in that I would not become um, you know, really distressed and hungry. And, um, and further, that um, the, I didn't know that I was already framed and everyone was already against me, that I would be isolated and then pathologize and um, set up to fail. And then it, there's no way you would go on the website and say, I wouldn't be broke if my former partner didn't threaten a hitman on me, steal my car, and um, all the other crimes I know I've already done. But, um, and also, um, like everyone would have just acted together to, um, they wouldn't have pathologized you and put you um, in a psychiatric ward because obviously everyone sees the human rights justice issues that exist and don't see an illness. A multi, multi millionaire on paper if justice comes. Comcare wouldn't have said, get, you know, screwed and, and take it to the Administrative Appeals Tribunal. And if they did, they'd totally acknowledge that um, a person with probably an acquired brain injury affecting the hippocampus because you're bled out and, you know, you had no blood less and was found with no pulse in the hospital, which you obviously got justice for, um, they wouldn't have kicked the can along the road and forced you to go into interviews and they wouldn't force the, um, the, the hearing to go ahead. And there's every reason to, to believe that you would understand exactly the reasons why they're rejecting you and you would understand ahead of time because you've got so many people on your side, um, like family and friends and lawyers and um, professional people, and you're never acting absolutely alone in isolation, that you just um, would be totally at ease with going forward through a forced thing on, um, I think it's the, the um, in about six days time, it's the 25th of um, January now. And that would never happen because everything would be totally comfortable and it wouldn't be forced at all. That's like, not a lot of money, 95% um, of your age for 45 weeks and then keep going on. And it's and all this issue has got nothing to do with money. And it's got nothing to do with power, money, privilege, and people in revered positions in cushy places who um, act um, with entire cowardice um, to be one stick in the faggot of things that hit me over the head. Like, they're all great people. A TPD payout from work covers because you've got a maimed in the head brain injury from um, the systemic abuse that folded back on itself and actually um, caused you to suicide as long as the prior stuff. Um, well, um, that's not a lot of money. And um, you probably know exactly how much it is. And in addition to that, um, you were deserving of it. And if you were deserving of it, you'd absolutely get it. And there's no way that you would have um, emailed Michaelia Cash, the Attorney General, and there's no way that she would have condoned all this from AFCA, from APRA, from ASIC, 
from Africa and the Human Rights Commission, and there was no way, even though you said, and please don't uh, send me to the SANE helpline because my book was SANE's book of the year there and I've already spoken to um, the manager there, um, that uh, Jack Heath, that um, th there's no way that she could actually um, gaslight you and reject you. And that's not a common thing to do to people in politics. And, and there's no way that she would have sent you to the SANE helpline and just totally and utterly rejected your whole complaint. And hang on person under the uh, another statutory organization under the attorney general is the ombudsman the national ombudsman and they always always listen to you without prejudice and with full dignity and th they've even articulated a whistleblower method by which you could be safe from death threats and um you could live a life free from oppression because that's what everyone deserves and that's what happens in a just and equal society generals on your side and um, you didn't hear from the um, ombudsman today and you, you you weren't given the runaround and there's no video on here that even describes anything to do with that ahead with this there's no way they're going to set you up and put you in jail and and try and frame you with like being a pedo or a dog fucker or a rapist or something like that they're not going to try and shame you whatsoever they're actually very courteous and kind to you and they would never pathologize you um, to put you in a psych ward and you haven't actually been threatened that that will be the case. Your family, oh, they're totally understanding. Your sister would never say on your birthday, fuck off you schizo and you druggo and get the fuck out of our lives. And there's no way you'd never hear from her again until um, maybe oh, over seven months later um, when you actually sent an articulate email to the family um, acknowledging what they've witnessed and how they have an act and she wouldn't um, condone you for um, getting um, accepted into a psychiatric ward at that time just before Christmas where um, we where and you, and you wouldn't have caught COVID because there's no risk at all it's totally supporting like he, he, he wouldn't say you live you don't live within your means when you actually live on about $300 a week and your rent's $308 a week you got flushed at when she was a kid, that means that her sexual abuse is equal and absolutely in line and 100% legend with your experience. And she's right all the time because she's perfect. Not. <laughs> you weren't rejected from the Ombudsman and IBAC and ASIC and APRA as a whistleblower? Of course I believe you. Of course you're not the enemy of the government. And of course you're not some infamous vagrant. <laughs> like Ned Kelly. Conspiracy to pervert the course of justice is a crime that's taken very seriously in this country. And so is victimization. Victimization would never occur. In fact, there's no way that you could ever, ever be um, totally and utterly banned from the Victorian Human Rights and Equal Opportunity Center. And additionally, um, totally um, um, broken nosed by the Australian Human Rights Center. Because everyone cares about human rights, even if you die. <laughs> you deserve to die. Anyway, you were saved anyway. You were hardly even dead. The hospital kicked you out. They, that, that's rubbish, they kicked you out. They let you go ethically. They knew where you were staying. They knew you had a place to stay. They knew you had a job. They knew you had money. They knew you had food. And they let you go in an entirely equity, equ equitable manner that was in line with human rights um, litigation. And they followed up very, very well with um, following up a suicidal patient. And you didn't even have to wait very long to um, see a specialist. In fact, um, it only took, um, uh, how long was it? Just over 11 months to see a psychiatrist. And that's totally and utterly cool. Just because you can't feel your feet, like that you've got a pair of dead socks on, doesn't mean that you've got any issue to complain to the doctor about. And in addition to that, just because the Werribee Mercy Hospital, um, the hospital in which you literally died at and then was accidentally recovered and rev rev revived, and the Health Complaints Commissioner covered up, and then the Mental Health Complaints Commissioner were called out biased with Alex Tinter, um, and the Ben Calder, the Ombudsman, condoned that as nothing to see. And because you absolutely cooked from the top, um, 
just because um, of all that and you can't feel your feet, uh, it, it doesn't really mean anything. And and there's nothing wrong at all with um, with the, the CEO of the hospital, Dave Stevenson. Hello, Dave. Um, there's nothing wrong with him at all personally emailing you and saying, if you've got a problem with the hospital, sue me directly and personally, knowing full well that you, A, can't go to police, and B, can't get a lawyer, because you're banned from the police, and you're banned from getting a lawyer, and um, that this is totally cool. And um, in addition to that, um, he would never have the agency or the audacity to do that in such a vile, audacious way. And in addition to that, um, Ben Calder said there was an apology from the hospital. That's right. Because they apologised not for um, the uh, systemic um, conspiracy that ended in my murder or the, um, the abandonment of duty of care or the entire framing, maiming, shaming, victimisation of one singular person or the misdiagnosis or any other numerous things. Um, they actually apologised for the broken toilet brush that I tried to use to sever my artery um, and they wrapped it up in my clean clothes and delivered the dirty toilet brush back to me. Um, and in, in the apology, they said, we're sorry, we don't usually give away hospital property. And that's totally and utterly cool. And there's no, um, no tongue in cheek, um, big F you at that in, in that whatsoever. And Ben Calder was absolutely right, um, to, 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 um, to see that there was nothing wrong with that. You weren't maimed after you left hospital. They didn't put you on job seeker instead of the pension. That'd be silly ridiculous that um they all knew that there was a court case coming up and that there were litigious things happening Ooh, doo, 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 doo. and that um mike 121 the person who's hosted your website from um the old people at um white dog green frog um they never would have just stepped right out of the blue and deleted all of your um websites all of your um all of your emails all of your um backups and all of your evidence they would have never done that and they would have never blocked you immediately and done it without warning and with impunity because there's no way that they could do that absolutely at all. Like, that's just crazy talk. And there's no way that if you went to um, the business.gov.au or business.vic.gov.au, they would all care about it. And if they didn't, they, would, they, they might want to send you to the small business and family ombudsman, but um, they would never, never just reject the complaint. And if they did, they would send you to the telecommunications industry ombudsman and they would never, um, never ever have um, uh, rejected that whatsoever. And none of this evidence is on your website. NDIS are totally cooperative with you. They haven't um, um, rejected your local area coordinator they haven't um, refused to play, pay 42 plus invoices that they knew from your um, landlord, Hung, hi Hung, um, that, um, uh, that you would be kicked out um, as a homeless person before Christmas and they wouldn't totally let that f just go down the line and just totally reject that. And even if they did, like they wouldn't blame, blame plan, plan partners and plan partners wouldn't blame the NDIS. And um, in addition to that, um, uh, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, yeah, I, you wouldn't have had to email um, the NDIS minister and then have a representative call you weeks later and that would be really helpful. And they'd sort it all out and you would have a plan review. Um, like, you know, going back in time, you know, to try and make up for the injustices. It wouldn't be months ahead, like in April. That wouldn't happen be refused a lawyer. You can't um, email Greg Hunt and Bill Shorten and Adam Band and um, Katie Hall and Mark Latham and a whole lot of other people and they would absolutely um, come to your aid as a person who has really acted as an advocate for the last 25 years and even spoken in Australian Parliament. They'd be totally on your side. And even if you emailed Dan Andrews 
Dan Andrews wouldn't say it was a um, pathologized um, mad person. He would um, actually really revere and help you through the thing. And he wouldn't send you to the support helpline of the Werribee Mercy Hospital, where you've already been rejected from. They wouldn't have sent a, um, a, a message to you after all this time saying, oh, we had to stop um, because of uh, an impasse. And we all know what impasse is. None of that would have ever happened from contacting HCF. How ridiculous. Yeah, ASIC wouldn't have accepted your bankruptcy because they would have known that um, you were owed all this money, at least half a million dollars from your former partner. I mean, that's as easy as a walk in the, that's a walk in the park. And of course, if you had to provide evidence to ASIC that um, you didn't have to go bankrupt, they would totally come to the party and the senior people there would be totally on your side and your, ba your bankruptcy would be wiped easy be rejected whistleblower rights from APRA because um, you're not a Commonwealth employee. I mean, there's no there's no way they do that because you actually have a, um, a registration number with the federal government. Duh. Having a psychiatrist or psychologist after um, a whole year after killing yourself and then living on, say, like $40, $50 a week for a whole year in poverty isn't a symptom of the system that's kicking the can down the road, delaying and deferring your any justice whatsoever until you and aid and abetting your own death. That's not even happening. And um, that, um, that 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 had even happened. That's not indicative of just a bad public mental health system. And it's definitely not indicative of a conscious, malicious, and intentional method um, to make you go batshit crazy by your own and kill yourself of your own accord before you get justice, because you're not worth millions and millions of dollars um, all up. And and to be fair, nothing would happen to Australian society or the politicians or anything like that if um, one domino went over and the whole fucking lot went over. And they would never frame you before that happened. The Attorney General hasn't written to you. You're dreaming. He must be mad. There's no way that a doctor and human rights awarded advocate and um, an artist of 30 years and a person who's spoken in um, Parliament to Montreal to Dubbo, spoken hundreds of times, as altruistic as he can be for other people all this time, there's no way that the systems of oppression and the conspiracy to pervert the course of justice and victimisation would leave you squatting with no money, barely any food, no healthcare, denied medication rendered a voiceless vagrant, no avenue to complain, banned from police, banned from um, litigation, a literal refugee in your own country, totally innocuous in your agency to act, banned from reporting crime to a police, banned from any litigation at the legal bar, living as a marginalised and victimised person lower than shark shit, systemically oppressed, and in addition to that, marginalised already, now with an additional acquired brain injury from the near-death experience that was the systemic conspiracy um, and oppression that was the murder that has now marked your memory and makes you a bit crack -crack. And you wouldn't be utterly framed and systemically rejected. You would be absolutely believed by everyone, acknowledged and respected. Because everything with sentience deserves respect and that's the lay of the land. I could totally admit that this has all happened and um, you know, come off without, without a, without a, without a scratch. Why they probably wouldn't want to kill you before they got a bruise on their nose. Why you got a rejection from the office of um, Prime Minister and Cabinet? He's so, um, I don't know, he's so dramatic and so, um, so grandiose sometimes. <sighs> Drop acid with Kathy Freeman. He could be banned from calling places like APRA and NHPRPC and the police and the federal police and um, so many others. And there's no way that your email address and actual IP could be blocked from the federal um, family circuit court because of your former partner and you couldn't be blocked from the um, federal police. There's no way that could happen in hell because they don't take notice of your IP, your computer's not hacked and no suspicious things have ever happened on your computer. And you don't have evidence of that and it's not on the website Killing.info. No evidence of your relationship with your former partner on the website, like such as when you gave him the wedding ring or when he um, admitted that he had a job that he couldn't uh, speak at, 
or that um like he when you um just before you went to the hospital uh, a random person said i think you need help on your website and um, it said mate get help now and publish proof or i'm reporting you to your professional body in ndis if i don't see proof on your site by monday i'm reporting you and there's no way that could be my former partner because it, we just have nothing to do with each other and accepting money from other places he didn't invest um 1.2 million dollars in an overseas offshore tax haven made from the money from a house he made, he sold selling cocaine and um and that wouldn't have shown up on any um tax record um that you care to look at um you know it's it's really hard to find these things out there's not a chance in hell that someone would die or be at risk of death and no one would care and um in addition to that if you call police and dial triple zero they would obviously be right on the case and they'd believe everything you say and they wouldn't track your number and they wouldn't deny you and they wouldn't just go well let's pathologize him and lock him up such thing as victimization and vilification via a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice that killed rich mclean by proxy mclean hasn't been framed no one's shamed richard at all um no one's maimed him and he hasn't been blamed the murder wasn't whitewashed and after and even if that did happen which it didn't they wouldn't crucify him then and desecrate his prosperity his ability to earn money his ability to acquire money his ability to have money his ability for health care or access to health care and they would definitely not silence his voice and they would definitely not aid and abet his death by proxy that would never happen evidence of this ever existing as far as i'm concerned i don't give a fuck or rich deserves to die i ignore it i could aid and abet that happening <laughs> first you won't uh, matter of fact i got it now oh we're sorry it falls outside the area of our expertise isn't a panacea for go fuck yourself HEF in congruence with AFCA didn't cause my financial duress as well with work cover and my litigation for the um, corrupt Geelong magistrate and the corrupt um, affray in which um, there was no um, clear evidence that I wasn't the principal aggressor because there's a video of it that I could easily get from the police. Like none of that caused financial distress and if it did it wasn't partially responsible for your incarceration uh, stress is a mental illness who'd have thought and you know what hf had nothing to do with that you haven't got evidence to back all this up on your website see you didn't do it by the book you didn't do it for years and years through the right processes and you weren't gaslighted, ostracized, excluded, neglected, and framed, shamed, and set up to fail over and over again to aid and abet your death um, in conspiracy. Hi, Crystal. Um, and that never happened. And um, because um, you've had to resort to these desperate ways of, um, of, um, of actually having a chance at existence that's barely equitable, um, we're going to demonize you and um, there's going to be no atonement for this whatsoever because you're an evil fucking cunt. We here at the government acknowledge when we've done something wrong and we act for our citizens. Our citizens are our priority and um, if it's proven to us beyond reasonable doubt we'll of course atone for the mistakes that have robbed people or one particular person of their life their dignity their human rights their family relationships and their friends and their agency to justice and we won't we will admit that um we stood in the way of that and we'll admit that there's a conspiracy to pervert the course of justice and of course we will atone our um our place in the world with Richard as an inconceivably vast oppression against one singular person, which is, uh, well, 
Just a fair game, really. But Rich is an extortionist. Money's his currency. Don't you understand? He wasn't given a hundred thousand dollars and then the guy said it was a mistake. So he gave it back? That never happened. He's obviously bought all of this upon himself. He's not a reputable person who has ever done anything for anyone else. And our entire side, which is basically the entire government or anyone with a dot vic.gov.au or a .gov.au is um, entirely against him and that's totally equitable and it's totally fair and we acknowledge that Richard has um, played an important role in advocating for marginalised people um, who has less than himself for many many years probably 25 years and we readily admit when we're wrong and um, and there is no inconceivable amount of um, vertigo when Rich thinks to himself, is this really happening to me? And there's absolutely no reason to believe that um, the prejudices that Richard has already um, signed up to, such as being a poof or being mad or um, having taken drugs in the past, he's not easily exploitable whatsoever. We wouldn't use any way to use those things against him. That would be abhorrent. Oh, come on, we're the NDIA. We're the statutory authority that's supposed to look after marginalised people. Of course we'll intervene now that we know he's homeless with no food and no rent and squatting and we actually watched that happen and didn't do anything. And um, yeah, we're totally here for him. It's not a conspiracy if Rich has contacted like particular um, leaders of state and federal politics and they've all acted with the same kind of um, delay, defer, gaslighting, rejection, oppression because everyone wants to get their hands dirty with Rich's stuff because um, to seem to be siding with him isn't going to go against them whatsoever. You see, if I had cancer and I was rejected an oncologist for an entire year, they'd be fucking outraged. But um, of course, mental illness is um, apparently, if it apparently exists, and it's not proven to be factual delusions, um, exists in the same currency. You see, if someone actually was discriminated and oppressed so much that they chopped themselves, which really is a rational response to physical, actual things, rather than a mental illness. But even so, if they were rejected from a mental health institution, having to have to be named something to justify them having in there, and were, re were released to a, a community mental health centre, um, it would be obvious that they would get the treatment they need and deserve as a suicide survivor and as a person highly at risk, because as the research shows, um, it's very at risk um, in the ne next few days or weeks that they'll re-suicide and, um, and it's obvious that um, that help would be given and it, and it wouldn't take nearly a year to see a psychiatrist. Now that would be preposterous. Oh, that Rich McLean guy. Oh, what a head fuck. I mean, obviously he's not an... Um, uh, <laughs> an infamous vagrant that we're all sitting by and watching rot and die, and that he has lots of support from statutory agencies and the government, because we care. Well, I just gotta say, the law is the law. And when you're right, you're right. And when you're free, it means you've done nothing wrong. Unless you're being framed for something in case you stick your nose out. But, um, that wouldn't happen because we're not an oppressive society and that wouldn't double back clearly confirming our confirmation bias that we um, actually have fucked over that guy. So um, yeah, um, justice exists and it happens unequivocally um, and can um, all the time, just happens all the time. 
There is no other option than for legal and equitable justice and representation for anyone in this country who is all on equal footing and um, who are even and there's equity and equality and justice for all because we're the government and that's what we put forward and that's what happens. LMCT three field four Y six seven eight. <laughs> and just always remember, kids and adults, it's safe to come out. Heteronormativity is not a thing. Abuse never happens, and when sexual abuse happens, it's always believed. There is no corruption. There is no systemic persecution. Oppressive government regimes do not exist, and the government always cares for you. In actual fact, um, it's kind of like um, the maiming and framing and victimisation and vilification of one particular person opposed by the whole thing, which would never happen, which would never be me, <coughs> is kind of the equivalent of like, uh, I'm not meaning to be um, culturalist here, but it's kind of like a stoning, you know, like when they when they get one person who's who's done really nothing wrong, framed by the society. And um, they've, um, or they've been liber and slandered to death and they, they get tied up to the waist and buried in dirt. And then each of the villagers comes across and throws one stone um, and just, you know, knocks them the fuck in the side of the head or anywhere on their body. And then um, this, this collection of... Um, of sticks that are the um, public service or anyone employed by the government is um, the collective faggot that's popped me on the head and actually killed me. But that didn't happen. That didn't happen. And it wasn't covered up. And it wasn't covered up by an ombudsman. And I do have access to the police. I do have access to a lawyer. Justice exists. And nothing's been done wrong here. There's nothing to see. And there's no big wigs to the top, like the Premier of um, um, Prime Minister and Cabinet. Um, what's his name fucking again? Oh, I forget. Oh, talk about being maimed in the head. Scott Morrison. Now there's a good bloke. Probably still crying about his circumcision scars. Or is he a brother in the hood? I'm not really sure. Hi, Crystal. That's my dog. Um, but, um, yeah, he's a big knob, you know. Maybe he's cut. I don't know. But, <laughs> but um, look, um, it rests with that kind of person. And Josh Frydenberg. I think, I actually think I saw him um, in the city one day. He cruised me. I think he's... He's just slightly keen. But anyway, oh, that's just, just... It's hearsay. I mean, who, who knows about hearsay and, and liberal and slander? That's, that's, that's illegal. It's illegal. And Rich McLean has never been killed. He's never um, suffered a death. He's never suffered. He's never actually had to push shit uphill just to be exactly the same as other people and has probably achieved more in his fucking life than any of, of the fucking... The sheeple, I say that because the, you know, the sheep and the people, huh, get it? Um, the sheeple pro um, progress and get to in their own lives. Um, and that Rich has never done that. He's never stepped out of the zone. He's never explored. And um, I guess what I'm trying to summarise is to say that you're still going to have a sense of humour. You've got to laugh. Laugh at the breeze. And you know what? I'm kind of not a human ha um, with a spirit. I think that's preposterous. I'm a spirit having a human monkey experience. And the only reason to stay on this earth is that I've got Crystal, the dog monkey. And she's amazing. And everyone else is not worth hanging on for. As Bob Marley said, you've got to um, suffer for everyone. you just got to find the ones worth suffering for. I'll suffer with myself and I'll suffer with the dog. Um, but you just got to remember to... I don't know, any bit of summary of wisdom from the Dr. Rich, or Dr. Dick, as I like to tell the young cubs that I fuck. Um, <laughs> um, just um, don't be so serious. Have a good time. Please forgive. I forgive everyone. Everyone's forgiven. As long as I'm not fucking killed. Okay? Okay, signing off now, and um, remember to have a good time. Uh, peace be with you. Um, and none of anything that I said... On, on this on this ranting video ever happened and all of it doesn't have evidence on killing.info and there shouldn't be any justice and I think that we should um, slander Rich, rob his voice, 
um, rob his money, damn him to hell, and actually um, systemically and intelligently designed to kill him via proxy. I think that'd be a good idea. And that would never happen though, okay? Cheers. Oh, oh wait, how did they get, hang on, wait, how did they get, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm not filming your face, sorry. Oh, I'm having all these stocky thighs, and that little number, woo, give it up. You think I'm a bit mad, don't you? You're not speaking because you might be identified. All right, I'll turn it off. So what are we doing? We're in the car? And we'll say Ed? We'll say Ed today? We'll say Ed? What about if we get a coffee? Will we get the, the, the perfect park? The perfect park? And then we might go to the dog park. The dog park. And then to top it all off, we'll get a bone.